Hey there, Interwebs. Traditionally, armor defends you, but today I'm going to defend some armor, specifically scale mail. I'm going to start by looking at terminology, then history, and finally practicality before my big conclusion. First of all, some terminology. What is scale mail? This. This is scale mail. This is plate mail, and this is chain mail. Except it's not. As even the greenest armor enthusiast can gleefully correct you, the real name for this armor is just mail. When I first got into D&D and fantasy stuff at age 6, I called this chain mail because that's what everyone else called it. Later on, when I was about 12, I discovered the correct term is just mail, and I went around correcting everyone who still called it chain mail. I don't do that anymore, though, because as I pointed out in the Greek mythology video, the practical definition of a name is what everyone calls something, so if people call it chain mail, that's its name. I also like that name better, because if you say chainmail, everyone knows what you're talking about. If you just say mail, people who know it only as chainmail won't follow, and without the benefit of context, you could be saying mail or mail. Where'd the term chainmail come from, though? I believe it's actually a neologism for a different kind of armor. You remember how I said this was plate mail? Yeah, that's wrong too. The proper name for this is just plate armor. However, there was a transitional style of armor that led to full plate, known as plate and mail. Now, plated mail can refer to different kinds of armor, and there are different names for the same kind of armor, because every region has its own name for things, and even in the same region, different but similar things can sometimes share a name, and it's all very murky. What I'm referring to here, now, when I say plated mail, is exactly what it says on the tin. It's chain mail armor with additional plates attached on top of it. Sometimes the name also refers to metal plates connected by rings of mail without any mail underneath. The important part is that it's armor made up in some way of plates and mail, and it's called plated mail. I'm going to get into the realms of speculation now, but I can easily see this just getting shortened to plate mail. Later kinds of armor that were full suits of plates were still worn over coats of chainmail because there were gaps in the plates for mobility, and you wanted something in those gaps for protection. Later kinds of armor ditched the chainmail in favor of an arming doublet, which was a padded gambeson which only had the mail where it was needed. Because plate and mail armor hung around so long, then the name plate mail probably stuck around as well, slowly taking on new meanings. If this is plate mail, then surely this is chainmail, and the word mail becomes a synonym for armor. So what do you call armor made of scales? Scale mail, of course. With terminology taken care of, let's take a look at history. First, Matt, Lloyd, and Skull all have videos about scale armor, and I've linked them below, so I'll give you the quick version here. I won't say scale armor never existed historically. There are plenty of archaeological finds, surviving examples, and historical depictions of it. That being said, it wasn't very common, especially compared to things like chainmail, plate armor, or lamellar. Now, lamellar may look like scale armor, and it technically is armor made of scales, but the two differ in their construction. Lamellar can be made of almost anything. Metal, leather, horn, bone, wood, paper, the list goes on. The scales, or lamellae, that it's made of are all laced to one another, making a solid piece that's fairly stiff. Scale armor, on the other hand, has its scales connected to some kind of flexible backing material, such as cloth or leather. Make a mental note of that for later. The reason for scale armor's relative lack of popularity has to do with its usefulness. Time to examine practicality. Scale armor is pretty good at defending against chops, slashes, and downward or straight-on thrusts. Where it really falls down is defending against upward thrusts. The tip of the weapon will simply hit one of the scales, slide up it, slip under the scale above it, and stab the poor fellow wearing the armor. I'll point out the obvious, you'd also be stabbed all the same if you weren't wearing armor, and at least scale armor protects you from slashes and downward thrusts. Basically, some armor is better than no armor. Furthermore, scale armor was pretty widespread, even if it wasn't common. The Scythians may have had it, the Romans definitely had it, as did the Greeks and the Egyptians. The Indo-Persians had it, the Chinese had it, the Japanese had it, and even Native Americans had it. Some of these cultures never interacted, so if all these people are having the same idea independently, it can't be that rubbish. The advantages scale armor has over things like lamellar, chainmail, and especially plate are that it's much quicker, easier, and therefore cheaper to produce and repair, so if you just need good enough armor and you need it fast, scale armor is not a bad choice. Time for my big reveal. As I said earlier, this isn't plate mail, it's just plate armor. This is plate mail because it's plates on top of mail. Well, what if scale mail is a type of scale armor, specifically scales on top of mail? I said earlier that scale armor had to be scales on a flexible backing, but there's no reason that can't be mail. This design would also be good as a practical defense. Mail's big weakness is thrusts. Admittedly, it's not as vulnerable as is commonly portrayed, especially if it's good riveted mail, but there are still weapons that can pierce it. If you wore scales over mail, though, any weapon would have to pierce at least one, maybe two, plates of metal before it got to the rings. The best way to get around the scales, as previously mentioned, is to thrust up between them, but to do that, the thrust would be coming in at such an oblique angle that it'd be likely to simply glance off the mail rather than pierce it. 
Essentially, the two armor styles cover each other's weaknesses. I'm not the first person to have this idea either. There is a very rare type of Roman armor from somewhere in the 1st to 3rd century known as Lorica Hamatus Guamatique, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, and which Matt alluded to in his scale armor video. There are only 15 known examples of this, but it did exist historically. I also think this would be the optimal armor for a fantasy adventurer, over a padded gambeson, of course. It's more protective than scale or chainmail alone, and it's lighter, more flexible, and critically more easily repaired than plate, lamellar, or brigandine. If you get a hole in lamellar armor, you have to unlace the whole thing to replace one scale, and if you get a hole in plate armor, you have to take it to an armorer and probably have a whole new plate made. If a few rings or a scale break on scale mail, you only need to open up the links connecting the broken pieces and replace them with spares, which you could easily carry a dozen or so of. If you don't have any spares, you could still replace them with scales from elsewhere on the armor in less critical places. So the next time you come across the term scale mail in fiction, you can just fix that in your headcanon to mean scaled mail. You're welcome. If you like armor, you should definitely check out the Metatron and Knight Errant, linked below. You probably also like combat, and if you like my channel, you probably like silliness. If you like both of these things, then you'll probably enjoy my post-apocalyptic Thunderdome gladiator comedy, House of Carnage. If you buy a copy, you get some good laughs, and I get a few bucks to keep doing these videos. Thanks, and have a nice day.